coming up in the Bahamas tonight, tragedy strikes as a young boy loses his life. It's the eve of a march and rally where thousands of men are expected to hit the streets to send a loud message to the nation. And tonight we tell you about a place where you can get great deals while taking in the view. We're talking about Panama Direct. Stay close. The Bahamas Tonight Weekend Edition starts right now. of the Bahamas. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. It's great to have you with us for the weekend edition. I'm Clint Watson reporting tonight. Tragedy tops the news this Saturday as a young boy drowns. The Blue Hills playing field transformed into a crime scene today as scores were shocked to learn of an apparent drowning. Our news team was first on the scene after 2 o'clock this afternoon where the incident unfolded. Opal Roach has more. A sad day for the family of a little boy who apparently drowned in a pond in bushes just behind the Blue Hills playing field. Eyewitnesses told ZNS News that a group of boys was swimming in the pond when the unexpected happened. Bankers League player Arvin Butler says they were playing ball when they learned about the tragedy. Yeah, we were in the middle of the game and uh, the outfielders started to panic and I saw them scaling the, the outfield fence, and they said some young boy was injured on the other side of the fence. So we started to call for help, and uh, when we got over there, we noticed that the young boy was wet, like he'd been swimming. One of the boys who was with him ran home, all the way home in Yellow Elder for help, and he came back, I think, with his older brother, uh, who pulled the young man from the water. Butler says he was surprised to find out that youngsters actually went swimming in the pond, which is not visible from the road. We usually have kids in the back here behind the field. They usually go for the home run balls and bring them back. And, and sometimes the kids go and play ball in, behind the fence. But I, uh, when I saw the, ki saw the, young, the, the young boy wet, uh, I, I was trying to figure out how he got well, all wet up. Well, ZNS News was first on the scene, and when news spread of the drowning, would-be relatives rushed there to see what had happened. <laughs> A woman was also near the body of the child, and she simply wrapped her arms around him. Meantime, a male relative also came to the scene and was visibly shaken. Ball players watched from the field as all games ended abruptly. Meantime, Butler, who was really touched by the incident, shared this bit of advice. It's all these serious times, we got to watch our kids. we got to know where they are 24 hours a day now. It's just too many things happening, and, and it's very sad now that this mother has to come out here and have to deal with this, the parents of this family, uh, uh, of this little boy now. And it's, you know, it's really disappointing that, you know, he was out there alone again with another young child. He only looks like about maybe 9, 10, or 11 year old. It's very sad. I'm Opal Roach, ZNS News. On the heels of Fire Safety Week, another person has lost his life in a house fire. This time, it's an elderly man in his late 70s. It was around 1.30 this morning at St. Vincent Road off Faith Avenue that the four-room single-story wooden structure was destroyed in the blaze, taking the man's life in the process. After fully extinguishing the blaze, firefighters found human remains burnt beyond recognition. Now police have opened an investigation to determine what happened. Two separate traffic fatalities in the family islands keeping traffic police busy this weekend. First, police reports reveal that on Friday afternoon on Queens Highway in Cat Island, a white Ford F-350 ran into the rear of a white 250 motorcycle. The 18-year-old cyclist of Zonical Hill sustained serious injuries and was taken to a local clinic where he later died. Meantime, a similar incident took place in Inagua involving a 21-year-old man from Maud Street. According to George Harris of Coast FM, sometime around 7.40 on Friday night, the 21-year-old man was driving a four-wheel all-terrain vehicle or ATV along Ashwood and East Streets, Matthew Town, when he collided with a Fort Ranger pickup truck. The victim in this incident was rushed to the Inagua Clinic but a by a private vehicle, but died a short time later. Now, while an active police investigation into these matters continue, both victims are the country's 28th and 29th traffic fatalities for the year. 
Four Bahamian men and three Haitian nationals are in police custody today after they were found in possession of a large quantity of suspected marijuana and cocaine. Officers from the Central Detective Unit arrested all seven men shortly after 6 p.m. on Friday near the crossing of Great Inagua after it was discovered that the men had 57 pounds of suspected marijuana and two kilos of cocaine in their possession. The confiscated drugs have a street value of some $89,000. An active investigation into this matter continues. Well, could you imagine thousands of Bahamian men marching against crime and negative ills that plague our society? Well, that was a group of local Bahamian males planned to do, exactly what they planned to do. Tomorrow, Bahamas Faith Ministries is hosting a national men's march and rally that will start at the Southern Recreational Grounds and end at Ross and Square Bay Street. They are expecting thousands of men from all sectors, including social, civic, religious, sporting, and cultural groups to march down Bay Street as they take a stand for social morals, peace, and the rule of law. During a press conference, BFM senior pastor Dr. Munro says it takes strong men to stop what he called the hemorrhaging faces by our society. Imagine 3,000 men gathered together downtown on Bay Street declaring together that we must see a stop to the decay of our moral fabric in our country. Imagine over 2,000 men making a declaration that we're going to work together to rescue the other men in our nation who are falling through the cracks who are having difficulties in responding to the environment. We want to say that this is possible. And today I want to introduce to our nation an event that is unified by the crisis in our country. And that event is called the National Men's Event and Rally. This will be held on November, sorry, October 9th through the 11th, and it's going to be the greatest gathering of men our country has ever seen. While the march is for men's empowerment and a public demonstration that they are against crime, Bernal said leaders from different areas of society will be established, establishing a white paper to hand over to the government. He states that while symbolic events like the march is important, they want to see tangible results in the country. Everybody knows the problems. We don't want to talk about the problems. We want to talk about the solution. And we are clear that 98% of all crime perpetrated in this country is perpetrated by males. 96% of all gang members are males. 92% of all locked up in prison are males. 98% of all domestic violent acts are perpetrated by males. I want to remind us today as a country that the government, the educational departments, the police, the civic groups and the church cannot solve the problem we have alone. We have to come together as partners because the Bahamas right now is in great danger, not only internationally as a reputation, but also locally in our sense of safety. The National Men's Rally starts at 4 p.m.